Sum and Difference Identities, Problem Type 4. We've talked already about the sum and difference identities. Um, so let's just jump in and take a look at what problem type 4 means. I want to look at something like the sine of the inverse cosine of u minus the inverse tangent of v. And here, looking at the outside, we're dealing with sine, and we have two things being subtracted. So, since we're talking about sum and difference identities, I'll remember that the sine of alpha minus beta is sine alpha cosine beta minus cosine alpha sine beta. And in this particular case, alpha is the inverse cosine of u, and beta is the inverse tangent of v. So we are looking here at the sine of the inverse cosine of u times the cosine of the inverse tangent of v minus the cosine of the inverse cosine of u times the sine of the inverse tangent of v. Now we just have to figure out what each of these four things actually is. And thinking back to what we've done before with inverse functions and functions of inverse functions, it's not that bad. Starting off with the inverse cosine. If I draw a triangle, a right triangle, and I put angle alpha here, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And the ratio adjacent over hypotenuse in this case is u. Easiest way to write that is u over one. So the cosine of alpha is u over one. That's what inverse cosine of u is telling us. And that's the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. Using the Pythagorean theorem, from here, we can then say that the opposite side must be the square root of 1 squared, which is 1, minus u squared. And with that picture, we can then determine the sine of alpha. Because sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so square root 1 minus u squared over 1. Likewise, the cosine of the inverse cosine of u, well, that's just going to be u. And we have to worry a little bit about sign sine. Um, but it should work out in this direction without trouble. Right? The inverse cosine of the cosine of u might not give you the right angle, but the cosine of the inverse cosine of u will give you the right value. It might give you a couple of other um, angles that will give you the same value, but the angle that we come up with will work out. So that thing is simply going to be u. Then 
we can look at tangent. If I draw another right triangle, let's call this angle in here beta and remember that tangent of beta is v, which is v over one, and tangent is written as opposite over adjacent. So the opposite side over here is v, the adjacent side down here is one, and the hypotenuse using the Pythagorean theorem must be v squared plus one. Using that triangle to calculate the cosine, what's going to be root, I'm sorry, uh, the adjacent side, which is one over the hypotenuse, which is the square root of v squared plus one. And using that triangle to calculate the sine is going to give me v over the square root of v squared plus one. So that's where these four terms are coming from. I'll rewrite those on a clean page. So we have the square root of one minus u squared times one over the square root of v squared plus one minus u times v over the square root of v squared plus one. Now we have an algebraic expression instead of a variable expression, which is what we were kind of expecting when we started. I can clean that up by multiplying into the fraction. And then I can recognize that I have a common denominator, so I can subtract across the numerator. And we'll have the square root of one minus u squared minus uv all over the square root of v squared plus one. If I wanted to from here, I could rationalize. I probably should multiply top and bottom by square root of v squared plus one so that it cleans up a little bit further, but I'm going to leave it like that. 